This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, what up? Happy uh, Tuesday. We are live, Major Mortgage Man Cave, in Great Falls, as uh, Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle, it is your choice where you have repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Hanging out uh, at the Holiday Inn, it is uh, media day for the Frontier Conference. We had Big Sky Conference yesterday, and uh, today it's all about the Frontier Conference here in the Electric City. Love being up here and getting to see uh, Commissioner Kent Paulson and uh, everybody the, from the sports information directors to all the head coaches. We'll have a couple of coaches probably sneaking on through here as uh, we get ready for a, uh, a fun show today. Hope you are uh, ready for it as well as we are. And uh, now we're live on uh, Podbean, Network One Sports, Treasure State Radio, f- all along with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you can tweet us at Jay Walker Sports. You can uh, Facebook us as well. You can email Jason at jasonwalkershow.com. So uh, let's see. What else are we? Uh, we got a big show coming up. Today. Like I said, we're going to talk to coaches. It's all about the Frontier Conference today. We'll throw some other stuff in there as well. We'll get the uh, preseason coaches poll for the Frontier coming up um, as, as well. That's where a coach will sit maybe. Uh, let's go back to that camera Yeah, right there. Maybe that's where we'll have a coach sit. Frozen? I don't know. Okay. Um, I know I'm not frozen, so there we go. Is that camera even on? I don't know if the camera's even on, but we'll find out. <laughs> uh, I know you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get uh, frustrated because of the feed going in and out occasionally, but we are live and having a good time here. And uh, let's put this up. We are live right there. Frontier Conference Media Day. There, Major Mortgage Man. Okay. So uh, last year in the spring, of course, we didn't have a we didn't have a, a fall season uh, in 2020 because of uh, the COVID. Uh, they had a spring season of which you uh, you know full I you know I was not a huge fan of, um, but uh, they got done. They played it. You had you, know, you had some teams uh, tie Eastern Oregon College, Idaho, Carroll, all three and one. Uh, Rocky won one game and Northern didn't win any. And then you had Southern Oregon, Tech, and Western opt out, and uh, they chose not to play. And so there you go. Um, Carroll won the conference by virtue of a tie break. It was like the third or fourth tie breakdown. Defensive points allowed. And uh, then Carroll finished three and two after getting um, pasted by Morningside, fifty-five nothing in the first round of the NAI playoffs. But it'll be a new season in the fall. There's a lot of returning players for all the teams. Uh, Southern Oregon is not here uh, represented, but uh, you know that uh, Coach Hall is going to do a, a great job. I think Southern Oregon is going to be very, very tough this year. Um, I told you yesterday, I think the Frontier Conference as a whole is going to be tough. You might have two losses and win the league, maybe even three, because that's how tough it's going to be uh, all season in the Frontier. Everybody's got a ton back. Northern graduated one person from their team last year for the lights one that's it and i mean that's that's pretty pretty awesome so um you you know andrew Rowland, of course with mike van deest is the defensive coordinator now so um yeah it'll it'll be interesting to follow along um Oh, I know what it is. Never mind. <laughs> There's something in my way. On my, it's fine though. Uh, the Jason Walker Show brought to you in part by Speaker Sprinklers and uh, Speaker Sprinklers love green grass, as we all know. 
Um, but man, oh man, uh, I, I, it's this time of the year where you get excited for football, right? The spring season, yay. And I know, you know, coaches are all saying in the in the room right next door to us that, you know, the five teams that played, it was great. You know, Coach Van Deest even said yesterday when we talked to him here on the, the Jason Walker show, you know, shame on the other three that didn't play. But, you know, I look at I look at these schools that uh, that are here and and, uh, you know, it's. They all played five teams played. You had a lot of injuries. And would those injuries have happened in in ball no matter what? Would those injuries have happened in the spring, you know, regardless of a season, like Colin Sassano towards Achilles for Carroll, first practice of the spring? Would that have happened if it wasn't a game situation? Who knows? But they were gearing up for a game. They weren't gearing up for, you know, a, a spring practices. They were gearing up for games. Uh, a lot of experience for those teams that did play. Um, you know, it's hard to pick. You know, we didn't do a media coaches poll or a media poll this year. We did it a couple years ago, but it is uh, it is kind of hard to pick on on who you know who who's going to be really good. And I think all the teams are going to be good. We know Northern's going to be better because of Coach Van Deest. Uh, we know Rocky. I think Rocky's a question mark. We'll see how that goes. Um, you know, they, they, they have to replace a lot down there. You have Tech, which didn't play, but Tech's going to be really good. Kyle Sampson has yet to coach a game as a head coach on the Frontier. But he did a heck of a job as the offensive coordinator for Chuck Morrell. You have um, Western, I think, is going to be good. John Jund, hello. You've got Carroll back. With uh, you know Devin Bridgewater, Matthew Burgess, a really good defense. You've got Eastern Oregon back in. You got Southern Oregon, who I said is going to be good. And then you got you know College of Idaho, who you know is is going to have a, a quarterback battle. But you got Nick Calzaretta back, and it feels like Nick Calzaretta has been there for like six or seven years at the College of Idaho. But their 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 offense is great, and then their defense might be the best defense that that the Yotes have had in seven years, eight years of playing in the Frontier now. So it's going to be a loaded conference. The Frontier is the best conference, arguably, in the NAI. And I look for, I mean, you look at all the coaches, you know. Start with Troy Purcell. Carol, what, this, this is his uh, third year now. You got Andrew Rowland in his fourth year. You've got uh, Chris Dutrim down at Rocky in his what third year. You have Kyle Sampson who's in his first, but he's been there as the old coordinator, and now you know he's got two years as the head coach without coaching a game. Ryan Norse has been in the league forever. Tim Camp at Eastern been in the league forever. Charlie Hall has done a great job in you know what, four years. Um, and Mike Morosky, you know, really the old guard now. Him and him and Tim Camp, but Coach Morosky, you know, he got hired eight years ago with the Yotes. They had that zero year to get teams re or players ready. So it's going to be a lot of fun to follow the frontier this year, and I hope you're along for the ride because, uh, like I said, it's, it's a great conference, and I, I love following the frontier. And I'll love following even more in the fall. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. To, to quote uh, Coach Purcell, you know, you, you take it one day at a time, one play at a time, you win the win that play, win the day, and everything will take care of itself. Andrew Rowland, scoreboard, you, you get better every day, the scoreboard will take care of itself. And I think Northern's going to win a few games this year. I really do. He's got all these uh, prospect, uh, prospectuses. Prospect I, is that what they're called? But yeah, you know, I mean, Tech's going to be good. Tech's first game, Eastern Oregon, in Butte, August 28th. Eastern Oregon's first game at Tech, as we mentioned. Western's going to open up August 28th at home against Carroll. Um, it's going to be a fun, fun year in the frontier. There, uh, for, you know, looking forward to it. Uh, you can weigh in anytime. As uh, Tim on Facebook just said, "Bring it on." Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. We'll get to, let's get this football going. Uh, and uh, practice starts in a couple of weeks for these teams. They get started August 28th. It's the first game in the frontier. 
first weekend in the Frontier. I think they start, uh, the Frontier will start before the Big Sky, which is always fun. Uh, awaiting uh, the end of the speeches, I think Kyle Sampson just got done talking, so we should be getting any time now the uh, preseason coaches poll. Actually, I, I don't really know who's talking now. <laughs> There's somebody talking in there. I think it's Kyle Sampson talking now. So we're, uh, we're still waiting for uh, the coaches to get done chatting in there as they give their prospectus to, you know, who's coming back, what they're looking for, all of that, uh, that fun stuff. So uh, while they do that, uh, I'll take a break. We'll tell you. Um, we'll come back. We'll, we'll give you some baseball news or softball news as well and uh, go from there because it's going to be a fun, um, a fun ride. You got the state tournament starting here in Great Falls, double A, tomorrow, which is really cool. Uh, Legion, the uh, state double A Legion tournament starts here tomorrow. So um, that was Nick Bauscher that just ran through, by the way, the uh, SID at Montana Tech. Great dude. So. Let's see, where are we at here? Let's go to this camera. Okay. Uh, let's see, we're getting... Cool, cool. All right, we'll update you on some baseball. <laughs> and softball. And uh, just got a message from one of the SIDs in there, so <laughs> it's, it's fun. What, did you forget, you, you forget stuff? Kyle doesn't know what he's talking about without you in there? Oh. <laughs> uh, I love giving these guys a hard time. It's so much fun. We have new stuff we're going to hang in the studio thanks to uh, Casey Parrott, the sports information director at UM Western. And it's going to be awesome when we hang it up. If you're, a, uh, if you're a Western fan. If you're not, you might be upset. But we'll figure it out. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk uh, some other stuff. Uh, let's see. Tim, I'll answer your question when we come back. Uh, who expects to be the upset of the frontier? Who am I putting my pennies on? Tim, I'll tell you the answer when we come back. Jason Walker Show, live in Great Falls. It is Frontier Media Day here on uh, the Major Mortgage Man Cave, live on the road at the Holiday Inn in the Electric City. Coming right back, more from Great Falls on the Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122. Equal housing lender. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. 
Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena it's not today. Not compete. We, we haven't played for a long time, and we've got a lot of questions. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. That is Kyle Sampson, former Capital Northern Standout, talking uh, right now at the podium. He is the final coach to speak, and uh, we'll get uh, maybe get him on the air. Who knows? Anyway, getting uh, getting some, I don't want to say paraphernalia. Well, it's not paraphernalia, but I'm getting some info here. Can't wait to uh, break the news here. Okay. Uh, I can tell you who was picked by the coaches. Tim, are you, uh, Tim, to still, Tim uh, on Facebook, still want to know, um, Let's see. Let's let's check in and see what coach is talking about here. Uh, maybe there we go. We don't have to be here. To me, if you have to be somewhere, you're not going to be successful. I mean, you get to be a, a coach in this conference. You get to be a part of the Frontier Conference. You get to be a player at Montana Tech. Um, and to me, you know, ha- having that mentality, um, you know, we're, I don't know if we're 100% there yet, but working on that every single day, where our kids are really appreciative. You know, it's a privilege to be a college football player and a privilege to coach this great sport. And we always got to remember that every single day, you know, to be thankful uh, for the opportunities that we have. You know, I know that uh, I'm very thankful to be in the opportunities I have um, here in my career um, at, at, at a young age. Um, you know, going into this fall, um, you know, we returned quite a bit of guys um, from 2019, but, you know, that's two years ago. So the same thing. There's a lot of things that, uh, you know, we got to find out in fall camp. Um, you know, the, one, the, the six guys I want to really highlight right away is our captains. Um, you know, being elected a captain, in my opinion, is one of the highest honors that you can have in football. I um, mean, really in any sports, because you're not elected by anybody else but your teammates. Your teammates are telling you they believe in you, and they believe that you can help them get to where they need to be. Um, so the six guys that were elected captains this spring for us um, are quarterback Jet Campbell out of Billing Central, uh, wide receiver Trevor Hoffman out of Kennedy Catholic out in Seattle, uh, Hunter Sparks. Uh, offensive lineman out of Green River, Wyoming. Uh, Zach Trumbull is a defensive lineman out of Freeman High School in Washington. Uh, Spencer Schock, a uh, linebacker out of Missoula Sentinel. And then Logan Kaladechuk, a defensive lineman out of Columbia Falls. Um, you know, six guys that have, that have been very successful on the football field for us here at Montana Tech, uh, but also very successful in the classroom. Uh, you know, something that uh, I know they're very proud of and I'm very proud of for them. Our six captains, you know, some of our best football players, but all of them have a, a GPA of 3.6 or better, which is pretty awesome. They do a great job. Uh, you know, playing, playing the game of football at a high level, but also taking care of their business, taking pride in what they do in the classroom. Um, you know, we've got some, some returners uh, coming back on both sides of the ball. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, we were very veteran in my first year as a coordinator in 19, um, you know, under Coach Morrell. Um, we returned five starters on defense. Uh, Logan Kaladechuk, one of our captains, will be a starting defensive end that's coming back. Uh, he battled some injuries that year, was back and fully healthy. Uh, Spencer Shock, same thing, was injured that year. Um, played a little bit, but is now healthy and will be a linebacker for us. Uh, Zach Trumbull, um, defensive lineman's coming back. Uh, Jake Orvis and Nauke Harm are two defensive backs that saw a lot of playing time in 2019. They're both back as well. Offensively, uh, we're a little more veteran on that side of the ball. Uh, we have nine starters coming back on offense from 2019. Uh, a couple key guys, our quarterback, Jet Campbell, who was a starter for us as a sophomore. Uh, very excited about Jet, his growth over the last two years. You know, my first year as a coordinator in 19, uh, just kind of learned the offense. And I thought he had a very solid year, but very excited for him to really explode this year. Uh, now being underneath the system for two and a half years, um, you know, kind of knows the offense inside and out. So really excited about what he can do. Probably the number one thing with Jet, though, is just his leadership ability. And everybody knows that. And we've talked about that. 
You know, to me, the best quarterbacks aren't always the most talented guys. It's the guys that are great competitors and guys that really get everybody around them to believe in them and play better than they think they are. Um, and so I'm really excited about Jet. Uh, we return an all-conference running back who is an all-conference player. Uh, as a freshman, Blake Counts, uh, he'll be a sophomore for us. Uh, we also return Tyler Folks in the backfield who saw a lot of carries as well in 2019. Uh, we return uh, Trevor Hoffman, who's, who's a, a tremendous receiver for us. Uh, you know, led, led the league in receiving uh, 2019. Uh, really excited about him coming back as a junior. Uh, Kylie Caprera was a starter for us as well in the slot. Um, a kid out of Butte that we return. Um, and then Hunter Sparks is one of our three returning old linemen uh, who will be our starting left tackle, who's, who's also a captain as well. Um, you know, really excited about some newcomers that we have uh, that, that were young kids in 2019 that have, have been in with us for two years. Um, you know, so we're really excited to see what they can do. But obviously, we don't know exactly what they can do until they get on the field and go out and compete. Uh, we hope and we think they're going to have some great, you know, great years for us. But obviously, you know, we haven't played a game for a long time. Um, you know, we've got some new transfers that have came into our program that we're really excited about that joined us this summer. Uh, some guys that I think can have some immediate impacts on our team. Um, so really excited about those guys. Uh, special teams-wise, we're going to be pretty young as far as the kicker and punter position. Um, two, two guys that were not starters for us in 19, uh, but two guys that have been here all summer working very hard in the weight room. Um, and really excited about that. But uh, unproven, uh, but guys that we feel like have the talent and the commitment to be very successful. Um, you know, I think the last thing that, that I'd leave you with is just, uh, you know, very appreciative to, to, to be back getting ready to go for a fall camp. Um, you know, it's been, been an off year for everybody. And, uh, you know, just, just, just knowing that we're going to get going here um, is very exciting and, uh, you know, very, very thankful to be here and thankful for all your guys' help today. Um, but really excited about Montana Tech in 2021 um, and can't wait to get to work. So thank you very much. That is uh, Kyle Sampson, the head coach at Montana Tech. We're going to get Wally Felt to come up here in just a moment uh, and uh, he'll uh, give us the coaches poll here. 2021 uh, preseason coaches poll. Eastern Oregon is picked to win the conference, followed by a tie between College of Idaho and Montana Western. Third place, uh, Carroll College, really fourth place, Southern Oregon next, Montana Tech next, followed by Rocky Mountain and MSU Northern. Four different schools received first place votes. Uh, Eastern Oregon, College of Idaho, Montana Western, and Montana Tech all received first place votes. So. The points of the top four, 39, the two second place, 36, fourth, 33, and, and next, 30. So that's how tight the balloting was. Um, but this is just a piece of paper. It will be decided uh, in the end of November when it's going to happen. But uh, that's our, as, as uh, the previous tech coach said, that's our guessing game for this year. So Kent, do you have any? things to say no. okay thank you everybody thanks for supporting the frontier conference all right so there it is eastern oregon picked to win the league by the league's coaches followed by a tie with um western and uh college of idaho carroll in fourth followed by uh rocky and uh, or southern oregon and then rocky and then um msu northern so that is uh that is it that is who uh, is expected to win the Frontier, Eastern Oregon, picked by the league's coaches. So there you go. Uh, Tim on Facebook has uh, been eagerly, if I'm going to put my money down, look for MSU Northern to make some noise, Tim. I'm not saying they're going to win the league. They probably won't. But if you have two or three losses, there's a chance you're going to win the Frontier. So, you know, I've always been a fan of Southern Oregon. I've always been a, a, a fan of College of Idaho. And uh, I think, I think that that is going to happen. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see here. Does this camera work? No, it, that one still froze. I don't know what's going on. All right, let's do this camera. This is a. Uh, this is pull the mic close. It's like you've never done this before. Well, I can't hear you in here. You can't hear me. Uh -uh. Oh, I should probably turn. Have you done that? this before? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. Uh, <laughs> This is the head coach of uh, the team that fixed, uh, picked to finish second in the Frontier, tied with uh, College of Idaho this year. Ryan Norris, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm excited to uh, play football again. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, I, I was ready in June. You know, it was uh, quite a 
year. It wasn't a year off, you know. I th- I hear people say, "Oh yeah, it was a year off." It was wasn't a year off. It was you know, it's a different challenge of of work, but right. a lot of growth and. I, the guys are excited too. I mean, they're they're so bored right now, you know, and, yep. and uh, um, it's just we're we're very, very amped up to get started. You guys didn't play. We've talked about it, and it's over now. And now we get to to get going, and uh, the season starts really in a couple of weeks with practice, fall camp. But uh, is how nice has it been? And I heard you say it's been nice to be able to gather as a group, not just us here today, but you as a team are able to have meetings and do some summer stuff. Yeah, you know, we're we're. We're back to normal, thankfully, you know, with our public health and our leadership and, and uh, you know, just in, in at our university and community and that, you know, we were able to uh, to, to get moving as things, uh, you know, got taken care of and people were doing the right things and, and that. So, you know, we've been gathering that, but it, it's been nice to get together with some certainty, mm-hmm. you know, and that was um, when you spend a year, you know, when you're 18 to 22, you know, I mean, the only thing that's certain in your life is uncertainty. That's pretty tough, and uh, it's tough on all of us. But right. you think when you're not mature enough with the life experiences to to maybe deal with that really well. So um, it's been nice to know what you're working for. You know, we get to play Carroll College at home on August 28th. What an incredible thing that is! Yep. And uh, I know everyone's very excited about it. How'd you spend? I mean, how's the summer been for you? Because you, know, you like to fish. Yeah, I do some fishing. I probably did more golf this year than fishing. And, and, you oh, know. Wait, no, hold on. Because was it Camp that said you're not a good golfer, Coach Camp? Pretty sure. And he makes fun of my fishing, too. He's never <laughs> fished with me. <laughs> hey, Coach. You going to stick around? I can. Okay. Well, don't get my camera shut. There's a camera right there. Jeez. Oh. Coach, Coach Stutz. from. a great spot. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Wes Ross from Great Falls Center. There's all co- sorts of coaches here. Um, so how's your, okay, which is better, your fishing or your golfing? Here. I'm going to fix this a little. Neither. Yeah, I'm probably <laughs> average at both. I'm a better football coach. <laughs> <laughs> coach Jeff Cho- told me one time, show me if a football coach is good at golf, and I'll show you a guy who's not good at coaching football. So oh. that's what he said. That's what he said, but oh. he's not good at golf. No, no. Um, he's good at a lot of things, but golf is not one of them. Marty Morningwig's a pretty good golfer. I can imagine Marty. He's probably, he looks yeah. like he's, he was a quarterback, too. I wonder how quarterbacks good at golf. That's, yeah, it says in my open. Mike Van Dee says that. He goes, they don't do anything else. They don't work out or anything, so quarterbacks are always good golfers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. But, yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, you got, got some projects done at home, and, and yeah. you know, I mean, I got some, you know, my kids are – teenagers and that you know so there there's the things that they're doing as well but uh yeah it's been a it's been a good summer you know i've had time to relax and good. do some fun stuff and visit with friends and and but most importantly you know is just just putting the time necessary in to get ready for the guys let me ask you this because going back to jeff cho when he was still at msu last year he said this in the fall like i told the guys go do something go be students go just join a club go have fun and it was odd for him because he'd been in coaching forever. You took a little bit of a break before you got back into the coaching. But is that kind of what you told the guys, too? Like, look, just go be kids. I, I tell them that all the time. I feel like we, how we do things and how we operate and what we do at Western is quite a bit different than, than, other, uh, than other places. I, I just, you know, there, there's something about being a kid. There's something about doing the things that you enjoy even, in, even during the season when you are when you are coaching, um, if you don't take a break, you, you never have an opportunity to think about what you're doing, what you did, where you go. Right. And uh, you got to have some of that, that self-evaluation time, some time to blow off steam. But, yeah, I was in total agreement with him, you know, and I, I think it was funny for some of the kids, you know, and they never done that before. You know, some of our kids did so much fishing before. They were just like – had no idea how much fun it was, you know. So it was a really neat deal, you know, even as coaches. So um, to get out and play golf together and to do some things that were totally um, different than what you'd ever done before. So I guess you could say that was a, a positive about it yeah, um, yeah. and the and the experience. But I'm, I'm looking forward to a season and to, yeah. to coaching games again. Tell me about your team. I, I, lo- Not, I don't want the 15-minute spiel that you just yeah. gave in there. Hey, uh, Coach Camp, Ryan, uh, Coach North said he's a better fisherman than you. Oh, hey, I'm done with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with him. If I did once, no show. I'm never done with uh, him. Best never. Coach Best coach, right? There. Hey, are you a good golfer? Uh, I'm not. No. Who holds their own better, you or Coach North? Are you fishing or golfing? Either one. Who's better? See, I don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of hobbies. I love to go fishing. I love to go fishing, but golfing-wise, 
Coach you, Camp coaches football. You don't want me in you your guys all golf course. <laughs> Although I did go yesterday. Good for you. Awesome. Right awesome. Right through a window of the house. I like it. I like it. That is uh, Coach Tim Camp from Eastern Oregon. He's the old guy in the in the league now. So him yeah, and Morosky. Yes. Old Wiley. Guy. Old Wiley. <laughs> so um, yeah, Your team, team. But you've got pretty good offense coming back. And let's start. Let's start I feel there. Feel good about our offense. I, I think we're, we should be strong. I think we can look different than we have in the past. Just uh, I feel like we're going to be very dynamic uh, in our backfield with our quarterback and the running backs that we have. I, I feel like we're going to be strong up front, and uh, I feel like we've got some good receivers. I, I, I just think we'll, I think we have a pretty well-rounded and experienced group. Uh, so what that will mean, I'm not, I'm not so sure. But, um, y- you know, I, going from 19 to 21, you know, I, I don't see – I just don't see our guys dipping. That's good. No, that, I mean, that, and that's great. And it says a lot about the strength of your team. In two years you haven't played a game. And the coaches pick you to tie for second with the College of Idaho, which is a really good football team, too. A lot of respect there. Yeah, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that. Um, that was <laughs> it's just so funny getting like, picked, you know, and when we do these things and, and that. I, I don't know if anybody's ever finished, <laughs> you know, really where. I don't think it's been like 15 Where years. you're picked, you know. And, and, uh, um, but, yeah, I, I, we have some good players. And I think one of the things, you know, you said ask me about our team and, don't give you the spiel, right? We're tough, physical dudes who love to yeah. play football. Uh, yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why when we play EOU normally, I mean, that, that, those games are crazy. They're battles. And so, as I feel like we, um, we're, we're both pretty similar in our approach to, to things. We have similar type of players. And I know when people play us when they leave, they're, um, they're not dissatisfied with right. the <laughs> physicality and the effort of the, of the football. Yep. yep game and and uh yeah, coach i'm always proud of our guys yeah. for that well and you have a great defense and the one guy i want to talk about cam rouser he's been starting since he was a freshman the kid's a stud from townsend i think he's the only one that didn't win the state wrestling title from that family but what an impressive specimen he is and not just physically he's so mentally prepared and just a great kid too there's no question he's he's developing into a really strong leader and it, work ethic is unquestioning toughness, uh, preparation, you know, just a uh, belief, buy-in, you know, everything that's about being a bulldog, you know, he's about being a bulldog and demonstrates it. So he's he's someone, we, you know, that, that you can trust. And, and you, you can start to sense that with, with the rest of the guys on our team. And it was funny, you know, Rob Good and I have been coaching together for a long time now, and, and we've had, you know, we, we've had some good players and great defensive units, and most of those have revolved around linebackers and a few d linemen. You know, we had Jesse McLeod, but I think 2012, you know, he was the defensive player of the year. We've had very, very few all-conference um, defensive backs since then. And, and this spring, you know, and I noticed it significantly because I call the plays, uh, we've got guys showing up where they haven't showed up in years. And, and it's Cameron Rouser and it's Derek Rao Edwards and it's it's Garrett Turner. You know, it's guys who um, who have the confidence and, and the ability and, and they're, we're starting to transition. You know, our corners, triggers, and just the different things that were happening secondary-wise was really exciting for me this year um, just to see that, that growth in our team because it was a point of emphasis. And, and – Cameron's one of the guys who, who's starting to make it happen. So and, and as being, I mean, I've coached more defense in my career than offense. You know, I was a defense coordinator for 15 years and coached secondary, and, and I just love those guys back there and to, to, to see, to start to see that full speed, confident play and that face first attitude is, uh, was, is, is exciting. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I prefer to be, you know, not giving up, giving or, you know, getting as many football plays at practice. Seeing what I'm seeing out of these guys, knowing that man, this is going to be, um, this is going to be exciting football for those guys, and and I'm fired up for for to see them play because of their effort. A couple final ones for Ryan Norris, the Western football coach, but nice. See, you're the sm- that's the kid's a smart one right there. Move the door. Um, your linebackers have always been really good. Yes. Your front four has always been pretty good. You talk about your secondary, but how's your linebackers this year? Should be really good. Yeah. Um, but, but I believe in those guys and whatever they do. You know, Kyle Schulte has been a four-year starter okay. for us, uh, multiple-year team captain, all-conference player. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, academic All-American, Cliff Harris Award. I mean, come yeah. on. And uh, and then Joe Caicedo, you know I mean? 
first year playing inside linebacker for us, and he's first team all conference. He's probably he's still the, there. Yeah, he's probably the player of the year if Jason Ferris didn't play for us. Right. So, um, <laughs> and I that think was like twelve years ago. It feels like it does feel like that. <laughs> but uh, you know, so yeah, I feel really strong about those guys, and we've got some good young players coming up behind them as well. And, and uh, I I, th- I feel confident we'll be able to continue that tradition. You know, it's it's just one of those things that's what I, I think everybody's got a real strength on what they do. I feel like I do a good job of IDing linebackers. I do a good job of IDing quarterbacks. You know, Coach Good does a really nice job of IDing D linemen and different guys. So I think um, we've, we've used those skills on our staff together. And I'm I'm not a guy who's, you know, too confident in my abilities. You know, I mean, I, 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 wanna, I want these guys who are coming through recruiting guys and I want to find out what their excellence is too. Everybody's got an eye for something, you know, and um, I just, I, th- I feel like we, we do a good job of that because that's something we know. So you got to keep playing to your, playing to your strengths and, and uh, we've done a good job there with linebackers and, but you know, since the day Joe Coker and AJ Wilson decided no. to come to, to Western, it's been a different gig. It's linebacker you yeah. and um yeah, I don't say that lightly because Mike Van Dees can coach a linebacker, you know, but um, I, I'd put, you know, Rob's ability and the foot he's done defensively right in there, and I think Mike would say yeah. the same thing. You know, I mean, that's uh, – that Western and Carroll, we have cranked out some of the most incredible <laughs> small college oh. linebackers over the last 20 years, and that's pretty cool, man. It is. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the Western and Carroll linebackers, just am- – and. Am- Coach Van Dees can just roll off the names like <laughs> so many, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But so can you, and and that's what's great. How is Jason doing, by the way, Ferris? He's doing great. He's still training and, and hoping for a shot. You know, okay. some of the NFL stuff didn't uh, materialize. It's it's super unfortunate for a guy with his skill set that COVID happened and and these shortened um, these shortened rosters and these shortened training camps and and those things have happened. So he couldn't just get out there and mix it up and see. You know, what do I got? Yeah. But there's still opportunities out there, you know, in the Canadian League and some other stuff. So he's working. He's working out with our guys. You know, he's staying, he's staying in shape. And, and uh, um, yeah, so we're – he's uh, – hopefully will – you hopefully will get that chance. You know, I think that's yeah. what everybody wants, right? You know, it's that dream. So few get it, you know, just a – man, do I major – how do I major up? You know, I'd like to see him get that chance just to, to – Pad it up and, and suit it up against those guys. Yeah, because I know absolutely. he could do a great job. I think I think he would compete well. I, you know, and, and yeah. it's it's such a fine line with what, how well you can do at that level. Those are the greatest athletes in the world yeah. and that, but just to have the opportunity to spend two weeks and see what you got yep. and can you hack it? Wow, dream. Maybe I should come suit up for you. You kind of make me want to. You got any eligibility? I left? think so. I think I got four I years left. So. I got a lot of guys who think so too. <laughs> but. <laughs> well, I think I do. I think I can. I think I can. I, you know, I've I heard, only did I've like heard a this year and a half of college. So. I've heard this a lot, and no one's really shown. So, I mean, you could be that guy. We could try it in the spring, maybe. I can't kick. Well, then we're going to have to put the pads on you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because kickers don't have pads. Uh, I like your glasses, by the way. They're, Thank uh, you. they're red and black. I appreciate it. A little Western it. Yeah. color. You know, I've, it's kind of funny every, uh, yeah, more... The more years you get, you know, the more pairs of glasses you get. <laughs> I'm finding that out. Yeah. I had yeah. to get new ones this year, too. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, uh, good luck this year. It's always fun. I got to come. Do I have to come to Dylan to get the helmet? You got to come. Well, you're going to be there on the 28th, aren't you? Maybe. No, I'll be in a golf tournament. I'll be in a golf tournament. I'll get you a helmet. I promise. Okay. I, I yeah. appreciate that. Coach uh, Stutzroom said you would never get him one or get me one. Coach Stutzroom. Yeah. I did, g- no one got the Oklahoma comment today about the tough guys from Oklahoma because <laughs> I'm the only guy who knew he was from Oklahoma. Oh. Well, he's going to, we're going to talk I to wanted him. to say something about it. The tough guys are from Northern Oklahoma. Yeah. Southern, okay. No, southern. Not, not Southern Oklahoma. Southern Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you okay with Oklahoma moving to the SEC? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll ask him. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't know about it. Did you know that I, care. do you know that I coached him in I, college? I do know. That's yeah. why he said that good, he, his exact words were good luck getting anything from Norse. <laughs> 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 He's, he wouldn't be the only one to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach. Hey, I, I work at Western, man. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a public school. <laughs> As always, I love t- uh, chatting with you. I will uh, see you soon. And, yeah, uh, we'll super talk fun. Soon. Maybe we can do a basketball game this year and my kid's not playing. 
Love it. I would, I would love to do Let's that. Let's do yeah, that. That would be cool. Well, we'll figure Thanks, brother. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Coach. That is uh, Ryan Norse joining us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk to one of his former players, Chris Tutrim, coming up Chris next. Chris Southern Oklahoma. He's coming up next here on the Jason Walker Show. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122. Equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. All right, welcome back, Jason Walker Show. I think. Are we back? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um... Having fun here at Frontier Conference Media Day. I say day because it's literally a day. It's a full day. Uh, we welcome in our next guest, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline here in the Major Mortgage Man Cave. His uh, name is Chris Stuttrim. He is the head coach for Rocky Mountain College. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It is a full day. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, we just got done with the media days where you get to listen to all the coaches talk about you know, how great their teams are and their players and um, try to do some research on them. But, uh, yeah. You know, short little, uh, I shouldn't say real short, but pretty good trip back to Billings. And, um, you know, we're right in the thick of things, ready yeah. to go. Hey, um, just once I'd like to hear a coach at one of these things go, our team sucks. <laughs> like, I don't like our look of our team coming up. <laughs> yeah. Just once. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that would go off well, not only with your players, but, uh, you know, as a coach, you sit up there and sometimes, you know, you hear this and you go, man, if I'd have done this differently or that differently right. or so, sometimes I feel like, man, I screwed that one up, you know, or whatever it is. Or, you know, as a coach, you sit there and you go, yeah, that kid didn't play very well. But, uh, um, no, it's, <laughs> you'll, you'll get that from some of them, I guess. But uh, it's usually behind the scenes. Right. Yeah, I don't like the way our kickers look. Well, Van Dees would always say the kicker. You know, like he never likes kickers. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just once. Our, our quarterback play was ter terrible last year. And it doesn't look better this year. Yeah, absolutely. It's, we, didn't, we didn't do a very good job of recruiting anybody better. So, um, no, we, uh, we, we try, to, try to be as positive as possible, even though in our head we're like, oh, crap, if that kid gets hurt, we're, right. yeah. you know. But uh, usually the, the nice way, I guess the political way is, uh, 
maybe we're young or we're inexperienced or we're, we're hoping big things from this kid or that right, kid. Right. But, uh, um, yeah, and maybe our kids think that too. As Oh, that coach is back. What the hell is he doing back? He was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It could go both ways. but <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so how'd you spend the, uh, the off season, which really wasn't an <laughs> off season because you played in the spring? Yeah. It, um, you know, our last – our kids got out of school uh, middle of April, so they were able to – to go back, they did, um, you know, kind of what kids do, tried to be as normal as possible depending on where they were. And so they were gone half of April, May, um, and then we do voluntary, you know, throughout the summer. But we're very fortunate to have over 70 guys here this summer. Um, and then as coaches, you know, we needed a break too. It was uh, it was a weird and crazy year for us. And so um, to be able to kind of get away, and I actually, my dad's retired but has a – small um landscaping mowing business and so after after april i went back for about two weeks and put some headphones in and nice and just sat on a lawnmower you know because it was it was such a roller coaster um you know that our kids went through our administration went through our, our coaches went through their families went through so uh, it was tough and then you know trying to play as much golf this summer and still get some work done and and you know do those things but uh it's been it's been pretty hot been pretty hot and smoky so i hope uh i hope we just get a huge rainstorm to help this stuff out but uh it's not looking too good right now so we'll battle through it well oregon is the one that really is you know the, yeah where it's coming from so we need to just can we just drop it well we want california gone but can we, can we <laughs> just dump, drop the whole western can we side dump oregon into the ocean too I mean, yeah no i just it's uh it's frustrating and i was talking with some guys this year or today already and it was you know last year no fans mm -hmm. and or this spring i guess well, now we don't know if we're going to have fans because the smoke. Like, you can't yeah. – are we going to have games because – Well, and that's the thing is, you know, hey, we may not have fans because of the smoke. Well, why are we playing football then? Well, yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's kind of the question and the looming one. And so I, I I don't know. I'm kind of the one that's, hey, let's think outside the box a little bit here, guys. And, you know, the hard part is we're not all two hours away from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, Southern Oregon, for instance, comes to us game one. Well, when do you tell them? Yeah. Do you tell them Tuesday? Do you tell them, you know, what do they do about their flights? Because is the airline going to be okay that yep. you're not going because of the game? Yep. You know, it's not a COVID issue. It's not a this or that. And so, you know, the Delta variant and, and vaccinations and all this stuff and, you know, um, – we we've gotten into football? yeah, we've gotten into a world where it's it's kind of other people making decisions for other things yeah. and other other aspects. So uh, all we can do is prepare our team, you know, as we talked as coaches, and prepare our guys to to make sure that we're ready to go whenever that is, just like we did this past year. And so um, we're excited for it. Uh, how does the team look? Because Drew Course finally gone right, like he was yeah. gone after like because he was there for like 18 years <laughs> I don't think he was that he did get kind of bald though when he was there I tell him that all the time the helmet so, though uh, no it's just his old age <laughs> so you know and those guys play early on in their career you, you keep track of them and and uh so Drew he actually graduated last December he was working last spring as well as playing football um so he moved on uh, but we're very fortunate you know Nolan McCafferty a linebacker for us I sat down with him uh in April and he said coach so I get another year and I said, yeah. So this was technically, you know, going to be his last year. And he said, well, I'd like to come back for two more. And that's a guy who's already redshirted. And, and so we're excited to have those guys in that philosophy. Um, you know, we must be doing something right if guys are wanting to stay around and, mm -hmm. and come back. So, um, no, it's 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 good. You know, like I, I said to the guys in there, you know, this spring I felt like we got better on defense. Um, we had bright spots on offense, but it wasn't it wasn't enough. You know, we can't we can't score 12 points a game and expect to win in this conference. And um, just like giving up, you can't give up over, you know, 28 points and expect to win. It goes hand in hand. So, yep. you know, offensively, I expect big things from our guys, and we've really pushed it on them and hounded it on them. And, and uh, our offensive coaches have done a tremendous job. Our defensive coaches have been great. Um, and so we're excited. You know, we really are. It's it's It'll be a battle at every position, as I tell our guys all the time. You know, you may think you're all-conference, but when you're a one and three or – four and seven football team or whatever you're not going to have the most all-conference guys you know the, the team who wins it's going to have the most so um, I think we've got some great players coming back they're they're really bought into what's going on they're great teammates towards each other they're phenomenal off the field you know over a 3.3 team GPA so so we're excited for it but at the end of the day hey who's going to get the job done and how are we going to get it done and, and it needs to happen now at what point and I know Andrew Rowland talked about this with Northern he did tell a kid like don't come back go to law school yeah at what point do you tell a kid like a Nolan McCaffrey like Dude, go go start your life. Yeah, I think it. You know, we had a couple of those. We had we had a Colton Williams, uh, who's a running back for us, and and I'm always a running back by committee guy. 
and he had the opportunity to go to law school. And, and I think guys just kind of sit back and go, okay, what do I want in life? Um, at our level, what's our scholarship? Yeah. You know, can I afford to be here? Sure. I mean, that's a big part of it, too, that no one thinks about. It's not just coming back. Everybody's on a full ride. Hey, let's go. I've got my NL- NIL, and I'm making a million dollars a year type of deal, you know. And so um, guys need to need to take a, a look at themselves. And, and as I said that all last year, you know, you may decide something, and Johnny over here may be something completely different. Um, some guys, you know, they realize, hey, this is the, the length that I can play football, and here's my life, so I'm going to do it as much as I can. Sure. And some guys are – you know, that job that they want to do is going to be there. Um, we had a we had a kid who was a backup linebacker for us, and he wanted to be a teacher. If he would have came back this fall, he would have had to wait a whole another year to start start teaching. So we, we respected everybody's decision, but it was good from a coach's standpoint of kids that, you know, hey, I want to go work at a bank. Um, I can do that next year and still come back and play football and, and maybe get another degree, sure. you know, and, and do those things because they still have to be in school. It's, it's not just to <laughs> right. show up this and do what you this want. This isn't Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not sitting here going, all right, well, I'll sign this and I'll do this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, these kids are going to school and, and some of them are going to school working and playing football. Right. So I think it is a decision that each kid made. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the ones that are coming back because I think they're great great players as well as great people you bring up a point with the nil and i know the nai started it last Mm -hmm. year and i haven't really seen any effects in the frontier but have you approached this with your kids oh absolutely have you talked to like you know this kid's going to get more money because of who he is Mm -hmm. i mean naturally it's the quarterback it's the star player as opposed to your kicker or punter you know yeah well and i think it's also you know who knows you you know, um, there may be a kid from Billings, Nate, Nate Dick, for instance. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a local guy, and people know who he is uh, to host a football camp or to go, you know, do a commercial or something like that um, is huge. You know, now there, there's different aspects and what they have to do and, and not do and all that. And so we're still learning as we're going. You know, I'm sitting there going, the Alabama quarterback's making a million dollars. Are you kidding me? What What's going on? I mean – you know, with OU in Texas leaving and trying to go to the SEC, um, number one, they wouldn't do that if they didn't know they were in the SEC already. You know, I, I know that. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that. They just don't want to say it. Um, but it'll be it'll be interesting. I I actually think um, there's going to be about 24 schools that want to be the big dogs, and they're going to say the hell with the NCAA, and they're going to do their own thing. Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why are you paying other people to do what you do? Yeah. You know, and that's what it came down with schools, in my opinion, where – Kids are sitting there when Johnny Manziel won the Heisman Trophy. The first thing that went on the NCAA website was his jersey with his name on it. I've been at the, I've been not at Alabama and Heisman Trophy winner, but when I was at Wyoming, you know, why can't I go sell my jersey? Yeah, has my name on it. It's a bowl game. They gave it to me. That's something that was given to me. You know, so uh, it goes back and forth, and and you see these schools make so much money off off guys, and it is what it is. That's what they're doing. They're making a lot of money. Yes, they're getting an education, and yes, they're getting taken care of very, very well. Uh, but what are you going to do when you work a job for 10 years and your your system brings in millions and millions of dollars? Are you going to be okay with them buying you a free lunch and taking you to dinner yeah. and stuff? No, you're going to want more. That's just the nature of human reality. Um, so we talk to our guys about that stuff. We talk to them about everything that's going on from COVID to uh, what's happening in you know the public and NILs and, and all this type of stuff. You know what worries me about the NIL is two main things. One... I think Title IX could really yeah. become affected at all levels. Yeah. Um, but the second one is the the locker room camaraderie. Is there going to be dissension if this kid's getting more than this kid? Or you know, it, it, yeah. And that I, you don't want a locker room to fracture, obviously. Yeah. Well, and and I think that can happen with at our level with a lot of things. Yeah. Why is he on more scholarship money than me? You know, what's this and that? So. You know, I'm a starter, he's a backup, or I was first team on conference, he was second. I think there's a lot of different things that, that play into that. Um, and that's why we take the approach of being open and honest. Hey, you don't like your scholarship amount? Come talk to me. You know, at, at our level, kids may get more academic money. They may get financial aid from the government that you and I may not get or vice versa, whatever it is. So you may sit there and say, well, that kid's on a full ride. Well, you don't know his whole situation, you know, and, and – that kid may be full of it too, just to be the cool guy. Sure. <laughs> but in the locker room, I don't know. At the at the Division One level, at the end of the day, it's you know, well, go sell yourself better. You know, if you're the starting quarterback in the NFL, you're going to get paid more than the left guard. Yeah. Does that mean you're better? Not all the times. <laughs> so that left guard may protect you and exactly. got you a lot of money. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's the that's the part that um, 
it'll be interesting to see, you know, and then in recruiting. Hey, our quarterback just made a million dollars doing this. You want to go there where he only made 50000 or do you want to come play for us? Yep. And so I saw Miami, University of Miami, they had a booster that is giving everybody $500 a month. Everybody on the team, no matter what. And so now kids are making six grand more. Um, it's, uh, But I agree. I think the Title IX issue and this sport compared to that sport, and that's yep. why I think you're going to see schools that just go, yep, we're out of that. We're, we're going to do our own thing. And I think in the conferences, you know, is Alabama comparable to Vanderbilt? Probably not. No. Not in football. You know, so is Vanderbilt going, ah, you know what, we're going to – we're going to go to this other division um, as U24 do this. And we may be really good in that division, but average in this one. Well, um, you look at Kentucky football and Kentucky yeah, basketball. Kansas. You know? Oh, yeah. Kansas, Kansas, too. Yeah. You know, North Carolina, Duke. Yep. You know, these, these basketball schools yeah. that also have football teams. Yeah, you know? absolutely. No, it's, it's – that's where I think it's going to be interesting. And it'll be interesting with the alignment. But I also look at OU and Texas, you know – I. Oh, you OSU, I could care less. You know, that you know, I, I grew up watching Bob Stoops. I really liked him as a head coach and, and you know, OSU's pissed because OU's going yeah. and they're supposed to be together. They didn't talk to us. And OU's going, You're not on our level. Well, Just yeah. like Baylor saying it with Texas and Texas going, Hold on now. You're you're along the coattails. You know, so um it'll be interesting and OU and Texas, you know, it's their their brand is big and you know, you're you're gonna lose recruits if you're in the SEC compared to the Big Twelve. At what point are we going to have, and I know you got to run, but at what point are we going to have basically the SEC, the Big 12, or the Big 10 together, and then maybe the Pac-12 and the Big 12 yeah. kind of merge? See, and I, I think it's going to be in who knows about when, but I think it's going to say these schools from other conferences are going to make their own conference, division, whatever you want to call it. So USC and Oregon may be in it. Arizona and Colorado may not be. And they're going to be in that second tier. So I think you'll have the 24, you know, the big dogs, and then you'll have D1, and then you'll have one double A. That's what I think will happen just because of the money. Yeah. Because these other 24 schools are going to, or however many, are going to say, man, if we didn't have Kansas football and we had USC instead, now we'd make $60 million a year in TV rights instead of 50 You know, and, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to say, ah, see you later. You know, because we're going to make more money with that team. To get on a plane and fly coast to coast anymore is nothing. You know, it yeah. used to be regionally where it was, okay, we're going to – the SEC, Southeastern Conference. Well, I think you're just going to have the conference. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to have a bunch of other conferences <laughs> that are – You have the East and the West. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as long as we don't do legends and whatever the, the Big Ten decided, try it. Oh, my God. That was terrible. <laughs> and I'm still going off of the – the Cleveland Indians, the the uh, Guardians now, and I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go with the team names and the what's right, Casey, and what's grab not. a shirt. So if it's, you guys uh, find sizes for you, grab shirts. Yeah, it's it, it'll be interesting. I mean, it all comes down to money. Yep. that's what it is, and it's markets. You know, I didn't realize, but it's like, well, why did the Big Twelve want TCU? Well, that's the Dallas market. Yeah, you know, they don't need SMU. They have TCU, which is the Dallas market. So, um, it'll be interesting, but. Uh, We'll, we'll see, just like everything else. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the season. Thank you for the help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's we're excited for it as much as we can do to get the Rocky brand out there, the Frontier Conference brand. And, uh, you know, we've got really good football here. Uh, and I didn't know that until I came out here. Yeah. You know, I've been around the NAI for a few different conferences, and no one respects the Frontier like they deserve. Um, and so we've just got to – Got to continue building the brand and, and, you know, building Rocky and doing what we can and, and getting out there. Coach, we appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. Fun. And uh, we'll chat soon. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Coach uh, Chris Stutzream of Rocky, as we uh, get set to wrap things up here, Jason Walker Show. Um, got a couple of uh, paid things we got to do. So uh, let's see. Montana Horses Magazine, packed with every wonderful, wow-worthy thing. You'll want to know about all things Montana Horses, montanahorses.com. On this day is brought to you by Big Sky Print, where we print what you wear. I think you got to get an interview done. Oh my God! Jesus, you trained for this. Well, it's my. And feet. he's knocking. Oh <laughs> God, please. Thanks, coach. Right, thank hey, you. grab a shirt if there's. I'm gonna take one for somebody. Well, no, he looks in there. I might have. You might have a double. Or, I don't know. But I can get you one cent. Anyway, it is a uh, Big, uh, Big Sky Print where we print what you wear. Today is July 27th. It is National Love Is Kind Day, National Scotch Day. Not a Scotch fan. Coach, are you a Scotch fan? Me? Yeah. No. Okay, me either. It's Scotch Day today, so. Oh, wonderful. National Scotch Day. 
It's also creme brulee day. Uh, and uh, this day, 1924, the eighth Summer Olympic Games closed in Paris, France. Uh, let's see. Uh, Art, I did get your, uh, your message. It is all about the money. Yep, Coach was right. It's not about the, the sport. It's about the money. So good job. Uh, 1927, Mel Lott, at the age of 18, hits his first league home run. It was an inside the park home run. 1946, Boston Red Sox Rudy York hit two grand slams in one game at 10 RBI. On this day, 1959, William Shea announced plans to have a baseball team in New York City in 1961. It happened in 62. It was the New York Mets. 1973, Walter Blum, the sixth jockey to ride 4,000 winners. Uh, let's see here. 1992, Japanese swimmer Kiyoko Iwasaki wins the 200-meter breaststroke in Barcelona and become the youngest to win Olympic gold medal at 14 years, six days. That is different now. Because uh, who was the youngster out of uh, Tokyo, out of, uh, I had it, but she was 13 she's from Japan. She won the, uh, the skateboarding. So that's cool. And she's 13, the youngest. 2012, Queen Elizabeth II opened up the 30th Olympics in London with some help from uh, 007. 1948, Peggy Fleming was born, the Olympic gold medalist and three-time world champ. 1972, it is Jill Arrington's birthday, sports reporter. A-Rod, born on this date, 1975. Jordan Spieth, born on this date, 1993. Uh, let's see. Michael Vaughn died on this date in um, 1950. Who is Michael Vaughn? He was in the band Paper Lace. Well, he was born on this date. He was in the band Paper Lace, the night Chicago died. Born on this date. That's a great song. They also did the uh, Billy Don't Be a Hero song, but, uh, yeah, no, that was a good one. The Night Chicago Died. Not a true story, by the way. Uh, 1940, Bugs Bunny debuted in his first uh, cartoon. It was called Wild Hair. 2003 on this date, Bob Hope passed away at the age of 100. Now time for, let's do, hold on, i got to find the music. It's always great when you're on location, right? Uh, boom. Almost at the end of the show, what did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. Art, I gave you a shirt. Okay, I'll get you another one. I'll get you, yeah, because you're going to, I love, I love it. Art's going to give a, uh, take care of us next week. Uh, this week, I'll see you probably tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yes, Art, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. All right, where are we at? Uh, the walk-off. It is brought to you by Cafe Zydeco, where the big easy meets the big sky. And uh, thanks to uh, the Frontier Conference for having us, the Holiday Inn for hosting us. Uh, Kevin, uh, doing a great job taking care of everybody here and uh, as well. All right, if you missed it, Eastern Oregon, the preseason pick to win the Frontier Conference football championship by the league's head coaches. Uh, they received three first-place votes. The uh, Mountaineers did. College of Idaho with two first-place votes. UM Western with one. And they split second and third. Carroll College comes in fourth, Southern Oregon fifth. Montana Tech got two first place votes and came in sixth. Rocky seventh, MSU Northern in last. But the coaches haven't had it right for a long time. So we'll see what happens when it all pans out. Starts August 28th, the Frontier Conference season gets underway. And uh, it's going to be a good time. Can't wait to see it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Southern Oregon at uh, Rocky for that first game. We mentioned uh, Western and Carroll, Eastern Oregon and uh, College of Idaho, and uh, Northern's playing somebody. Would that be Tech? Probably. There you go. I think it was, right? No, East, Eastern Oregon and Tech. I knew that. Western opens up with uh, Carroll. Eastern, okay, and, okay, we'll figure it out. You know what? We got a long time. We got, we got a month to figure this out. All right. Hope you enjoyed today. The walk off brought to you by Cafe Zydeco, where the big sky meets the big Izzy. We will be back tomorrow. Not here. Where? The VIP room at the Last Chance, Lewis and Clark County Fairgrounds, as we get set for Last Chance Stampede. Yep. There's a chance we're going to talk to Laney Wilson. There's a chance we might have Jake Owen. Who knows? I will tell you that we'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Can't wait. Rodeo in Helena. Next week, it's in Great Falls. you got Lewistown, too, this week. It's a great time of the year. And football just around the corner. 
Hey, thanks to everybody for uh, hanging out. Thanks to Capital Collision Center, Major Mortgage, Man Cave, and all of our fantastic sponsors. We'll do it again tomorrow. See you from the fairgrounds at 4 right here, Jason Walker Show. Go to jasonwalkershow.com. See ya. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.